Finally today, talking poultry, SUNUP's Curtis Hare looks at the research collaboration underway to deal with one of the biggest pests for the broiler industry. They may be the size of a grain of wheat, but for the broiler industry, these little guys are as destructive as they are gross. Research has shown that, that when you have a broiler house infested with the darkling beetle, that their energy costs are increased by 60%. So when we think about our true dollar value within the broiler industry, I mean, it could well be in the, the millions. There are two issues with the darkling beetle. It is a reservoir for pathogens such as E. coli and salmonella. The beetles feed on chicken feces, contracting pathogens, and the chicks eat the beetles, thus becoming infected. The second and most economically impactful problem is the larva will move into the insulation of the walls in the broiler houses and eat out of space to pupate. Now, over time, more and more of these larvae eating out the insulation, just you lose the R value of the insulation, and that's where the, the insulation damage comes from. For the past eight years, Dr. Talley's research assistant, Brandon Lyons, has conducted extensive research on the darkling beetle. I am studying insecticide resistance and uh, seeing how litter amendments are these acidifiers that uh, change the pH of the litter interact, which can impact the mortality on, uh, through our treatments of the birds. A broiler operator that has thousands of birds within a barn, uh, then there's a lot of ammonia that's produced. So they're, they're, they're very cognizant of trying to keep that ammonia down. And so one way they do that is they add these acidifying agents or what we call litter amendments. We want to see if we can combine what we use to acidify the litter to reduce the ammonia emissions in the house with insecticide. So we can find the best combination and the best treatment to kill the most beetles, basically. This is truly an integrated project. Brandon has done uh, facets of this project all the way from producer knowledge uh, to uh, the actual research part. Brandon's component into this extension site is just trying to get a better understanding of what producers have done. Throughout Brandon's research, one thing that's both frustrated and fascinated him about the darkling beetle is just how tough these little guys are. Typically when you do uh, resistance bioassays, you're looking at mortality over a day or two. And some of our treatments, you'll find that 100% of them are upside down. They look like they're completely dead. But if you go back to those same beetles seven days later, they'll be walking around back to normal. We have this pest that not only can adapt physiologically by detoxifying the insecticide, but it can also behaviorally adapt. And, and go away from certain areas where the insecticide has been applied. Brandon will be finished with his research at the end of the year. He says he's gleaned a lot, and there's promising roads for future research projects to go down. Appear to be some insecticides and litter amendments that for whatever reason uh, seem to have high mortality. So that could be a direction that we can go. When we think about things that we've accomplished in this research project, it's about gaining a better understanding for the, the next research project. We're trying to take that information back to the growers. In Payne County, I'm Curtis Hare.